Thanks for wasting our time today. I understand this is a marriage proposal, but we don't approve. Please give up and go home now. That's what his mom said to me when we went to his family's house to announce our engagement. She gave me a cold glare and spoke down to me like I didn't belong. I knew from the start that his parents didn't like me, but I couldn't turn back. I took a deep breath, braced myself, and introduced myself anyway. My name is Cheryl. I'm 29 years old, and I work in the general affairs department of a manufacturing company. I've been dating my boyfriend, James, since last year. He's four years older than me, and we work in the same department. James has a gentle look, and his kindness shows whenever he smiles. That's what made me fall in love with him. We both live on our own, so we often spend time at each other's places and enjoy weekends together. We've built a happy relationship. My parents live nearby, so I take James to their house often. They really like him, and whenever he visits, they go all out with meals. James and my dad get along great, and I thought everything would go smoothly when we got married. But James had always hesitated to introduce me to his parents. When I asked him why, he looked uncomfortable. Could you wait a little longer? My parents aren't like yours. I wish I had grown up with parents like yours, he said with a sad expression. I wondered if he had issues with his family, but I decided to give him time. I wasn't in a hurry to get married, so I figured it would be better for him to open up when he was ready. But things don't always go as planned. One holiday, James and I were on our way to our favorite restaurant when something unexpected happened. As the staff showed us to our table, James suddenly seemed nervous and fidgety. What's wrong? I asked, noticing how tense he was. He looked away, unsure how to explain, clearly struggling to find the words. I felt nervous at that moment, wondering if I had done something wrong. Just then, a woman in her 53s came over to our table and spoke to James cheerfully. Oh, James, I haven't heard from you in a while. I was wondering what you were up to, she said. She then turned to look at me, her eyes narrowing as if she was judging me. She had downturned eyes that made it seem like she was glaring. Her hair was neatly tied back, which made her sharp eyes stand out even more. As I gave her a confused look, she let out a little laugh, but it wasn't friendly. Are you really spending time with someone like her, James? You're such a good kid. If you don't like it, you need to tell her. Otherwise, girls like her won't get the message, she said. James's face tightened in anger. He glared at the woman and firmly said, I won't allow you to insult her. But the woman gave me a cold look and said, It's a shame my son has been tricked by a girl like you. Leave him alone right now. After that, she went to the cashier, paid her bill, and left the diner. What just happened? I asked, still in shock. James replied in a low voice, That was my mother. A few years ago, because of her, I had to end a relationship with someone I was thinking of marrying. She didn't want to marry me because of my mom's behavior. I began to understand why she had acted that way. James continued, If you choose to stay with me, there will be a lot of challenges. Maybe we should break up now. Don't worry, I'll keep things professional at work and I'll make sure it doesn't cause you any trouble. He looked really upset and it pained me to see him like that. But I calmly said, I still want to be with you, James. Do you really want to end things with me? James seemed surprised by my words. You know what my mother is like. If you marry me, she will be a burden to you. I don't mind. I think that's part of marriage, and we don't have to live with her, right? If it becomes an issue, I'll ask for a transfer at work, and we can move far away, I said. James stared at me, deeply considering my words, and I gave him a reassuring smile. Then I feel better about it. Is it strange if I propose to you right now, he asked. A wave of warmth rushed through me, and I could feel my face turning red. Are you serious? I asked, feeling a bit embarrassed. Yes, of course. I want to spend my life with you. I said, my cheeks growing hotter. I feel a bit like you've beat me to it, but I'm really happy. I want to be with you forever, James said with a smile, and I finally felt relieved. After that, we decided to tell my parents about our engagement. They were thrilled and asked how we decided to get married. I knew we'd have to mention James's mom at some point, but we tried to avoid the topic by pretending to be shy. However, my mother wouldn't let it go. So, have you already met James's parents? 
Or is that still in the works? She asked. James and I were caught off guard. No, I don't plan to tell my parents about the wedding, James said, causing my mom to gasp in surprise. Why not? She asked, shocked. Because I know they won't approve of our marriage, James explained. At that point, my father gave us a serious look. That's not acceptable. Marriage is the joining of two families. Your mother would be heartbroken if she found out you got married without her knowing. You both should at least meet with them once. If they still refuse, come talk to us and we'll support you. My dad's words were strong and comforting, but James still looked worried. I'm fine, I said with a smile, hoping to put him at ease. I thought that if we couldn't get past this challenge, we wouldn't be able to find real happiness together. Later, James told his parents that I would be coming to introduce myself. They didn't seem excited, but he was able to set up the meeting anyway. James's father was a CEO, and they lived in a big house with a large yard. When I stepped in, a big dog started barking. James smiled and petted the dog's chin, calming him down, and then the dog let me pet him too. While we were playing with the dog, the front door opened and his parents came out. His mother had a sharp look that made her seem intimidating, and his father looked just as stern as he stared down at me. Don't touch our dog, you're disgusting, were the first words his father said to me, without even a hello. He started scolding me right away, and I felt really uncomfortable. How dare you talk to her like that? If you keep acting like this, I won't hesitate to cut ties with you, James said firmly. His parents gave me angry looks but didn't say anything else unpleasant after that. They invited us into the house. As we walked in, I found it a little strange. Looking at James's face, you'd think he's a kind person because of his gentle eyes, but he didn't look anything like his father. His mother had upturned eyes, but he didn't take after her either. Sometimes traits skip a generation, or kids don't look like their parents at all, so I decided not to think too much about it. Once inside, as I was looking around, a middle-aged man in a suit appeared. Mr. Eric, welcome home, young master, he said, bowing to greet James. He had a kind smile that was contagious, and I couldn't help but smile back. It's been a while, Mr. Eric, James said. You've grown up so much, young master, Mr. Eric replied, smiling warmly at James. It was the first time I saw James truly smile since we arrived. Then James introduced me to him. This is Mr. Eric, my father's right-hand man. Honestly, he's more like a father to me than my real dad. My father never paid much attention to me, so Mr. Eric was the one who took care of me. You're the boss's son. I was just doing my job, Mr. Eric said modestly. But you've always had a soft spot for me, haven't you? James added with a smile. I like you more than my father. James joked with a chuckle, his laugh making me smile for the first time in what felt like forever. As we were talking, his mother suddenly stormed in from the back of the house. Cheryl, what do you think you're doing? Get over here now, she yelled angrily. She shot a harsh look at Mr. Eric. What are you doing here, slacking off? How many times have I told you to stay away from Cheryl? I'll make sure my husband knows about this. Now, get back to work, Mr. Eric nodded and replied. I understand. I'll do as you say. He then left the room. I couldn't help but wonder if being the CEO's secretary meant you had to deal with orders from the wife at home, too. James glared at his mother and spoke up. Why do you always treat Mr. Eric so poorly? How can you be so rude to someone who's worked so hard for dad? Quiet. You should just listen to your parents. I'll handle that man. Now, both of you, come over here. We followed her to the living room, where James and I sat on the sofa across from his parents. His mother was the first to speak. Thanks for wasting our time today. I understand you're here to get our blessing, but we don't approve of this marriage. Just give up and go home, she said coldly. I was ready for the rude comments, so they didn't bother me as much as they could have. I calmly responded, No, thank you for making time to meet with us. James and I love each other, and it's natural for two people in love to get married, don't you think, father, mother? I smiled politely, but my mother-in-law let out an exaggerated sigh. You really don't understand marriage, do you? She said with a mocking tone. Since our last meeting, I've looked into you. You're a very average woman graduated from an ordinary school, working at a small company. 
Despite having no real skills, you've managed to trap my James, haven't you? Do you really think someone like you is a good match for our family? In marriage, what matters is a good match. Mom, James interrupted, Cheryl and I work at the same company, doing the same job. If you think she's not good enough, then neither am I. We are a perfect match. You're different, James, his mother snapped back. There must be a reason you chose that company, but this woman didn't have any other choice. And, she added with a smirk, turning her sharp gaze toward me, it seems like you come from a poor family. After our money, are you? My blood boiled at my mother-in-law's comments. I had promised myself I wouldn't let anything she said get to me, but when she insulted my parents, I couldn't hold back. I snapped. Don't assume we're poor. Oh, what's wrong with telling the truth, she sneered. You live in an old, rundown house that's over 53 years old and drive a car from a decade ago. Did I strike a nerve? I'm just saying what's obvious. This is why I can't stand poor people. My family home was built by my great-grandfather, a carpenter. It's special to us. And as for the car, we like it and take good care of it. That doesn't make us poor. You did your research, right? So, you must know what my parents do for a living. I responded, trying to stay calm. Yes, I know. Your father is a university professor, and your mother is a high school teacher. They have respectable jobs, but there's still a big difference between our families, she replied. James is going to take over his father's business one day. Don't think for a second that the daughter of mere educators is good enough to marry my son. She laughed loudly, clearly enjoying herself. Just then, James stood up. His face, normally gentle, had turned into something I had never seen before cold and furious. This is pointless. I'm cutting ties with you. I can't forgive you for insulting someone I care about. Cheryl, let's go. There's no reason to stay here anymore, he said, grabbing my hand as we left the house. I'm sorry, he said quietly as we walked away. I'll explain everything to your parents. Please don't say you won't marry me. I nodded, unable to speak. We went straight to my parents' house and told them what had happened. James had anticipated something like this might happen, so he had brought a voice recorder. Everything his mother said was recorded. After listening, my parents thought for a moment and then spoke. Yes, the way his mother talked was awful, but you two are giving up too easily. We'll help you come up with a plan. So keep preparing for the wedding, my father said. If you've both decided to marry, you don't need their approval. But it would still be better if you could get James's parents' blessing, my mother added calmly. Hearing their words gave us hope, and we nodded in agreement. We decided to leave the situation with James's parents to my family and focus on planning our future together. Two months later, my parents called us and James and I visited my family home. When we arrived, we saw James's parents and Mr. Eric sitting around a small table. As we joined them, the room felt a bit crowded. I thought James's parents might make rude comments again, but they stayed quiet. My father was the one who filled us in on what had been discussed while we were away. James's parents looked into our family, so we decided to do some investigating as well. My father began. His parents married 32 years ago after his mother became pregnant. At that time, his father had just started his company. Mr. Eric, who was an ordinary employee back then, supported his father with dedication. As my father continued, James interrupted, That's all well known in our family. Mr. Eric started as a regular employee but was promoted to my father's personal assistant because of his hard work. My mother mostly raised me on her own while my father struggled to manage the company. It seems Mr. Eric supported not just my dad but my mom, too. My father nodded, acknowledging James's words. Then he said, Mr. Eric did indeed support your family with great dedication. Now, let me shift the conversation a bit. I'm a genetic researcher at the university. Genetically, children inherit half of their DNA from each parent. Even if a child looks very different from their parents, they still receive half of their genes from each one. James gave my father a puzzled look, and I was also confused about where he was going with this. My usually calm father had a serious expression as he addressed James's parents. Please listen carefully. I hired a detective to conduct a background check on your family. Your father works hard, and Mr. Eric has always been there to help. 
Your mother is fully devoted to housework, it's quite admirable. But when I looked at your family photos, something didn't add up. Neither of your parents have a widow's peak, but you, James, do. This trade is dominant, meaning a child with a widow's peak can only inherit it from a parent who also has one. And don't you think James looks quite a bit like Mr. Eric? Especially with the drooping eyes and widow's peak? That's why I called your parents here today to discuss this. As my father finished explaining, James looked at his parents and Mr. Eric in shock, unsure of what to say. I am a French teacher, just like my mother, and I'm good at French. I never noticed anything different about their foreheads, and even if I did, I'm no expert in genetics. After a long silence, James's father finally spoke. Forty years ago, I was so focused on my work that I neglected my family completely. Then my wife told me she was pregnant. What she didn't know was that I had been hiding my infertility from her. When I found out about her affair, I was furious, and she was just as angry at me for keeping my infertility a secret. After a huge argument, I told her that if I raised her child as my own, I would forgive her. In return, she promised to forgive me for hiding the truth. I made Mr. Eric my personal assistant to keep him close, hoping to stop any further affair between them. After spilling everything, James's father sat there, looking empty, as if all the life had drained from him. Meanwhile, James's mother started to cry. I loved Mr. Eric. I wanted to raise James with him, she sobbed. James is a precious child I had with the man I truly loved. I can't let him marry someone I don't even know. I absolutely won't allow this marriage. As she wiped her tears and glared at me, James gave her a cold, disgusted look. I've always known, Dad, that you never truly loved me, and I've felt Mom's strange obsession with me for years. I even wish sometimes that Mr. Eric was my real father. But now, hearing all of this you three are disgusting. Mom, I don't want to see you as my parents anymore. Even if Mr. Eric is my biological father, I won't acknowledge him either. I won't forgive any of you. I'm cutting ties with all of you and marrying into Cheryl's family, James said firmly. At his words, his mother jumped up, clinging to him, crying. No, James, you can't. You're mine. I won't let you go, especially not to some common girl. We can live together. I'll allow your marriage, but don't say you're leaving us. As she grabbed onto James's arm, I swatted her hand away. Ma'am, please stop. James is clearly uncomfortable. Do you even realize how much pain you've caused him? Probably not, because all you care about is yourself. If you had just betrayed your husband to be with Mr. Eric, that's one thing, but you've continued to deceive James and hurt him for years. I didn't want to say anything at first, because it's a matter between you three, but I can't just sit here and let you ruin James's happiness. Why don't you put his happiness first? If you don't like me, that's fine, but if you're only trying to control him, you're failing as a mother. From now on, I'll make James happy, so please don't stand in our way. After I said that, his mother started crying again, calling me cruel, but Mr. Eric was there to comfort her. We decided to talk about the future later. A few days later, James's parents officially apologized to us and my parents. They finally accepted our marriage, and James and I turned in our marriage certificate. James moved into my house, and we started our life together. In the end, James's father couldn't forgive his wife's affair. Even though it was too late to ask for compensation, they divorced and split their assets. Mr. Eric also resigned and moved far away with James's mother. Her luxurious life came to an end, and she was forced to live the kind of life she always looked down on. She sometimes sends letters asking James for money, but he ignores them. He has cut all ties with his father since they aren't biologically related, and he has no intention of becoming Mr. Eric's adopted son. Legally, he's still his father's son, but they seem to have accepted that. After Mr. Eric resigned and James's mother was no longer around to support him, the performance of James's father's company dropped. He stepped down and no one knows where he went after that. A year after marrying James, I noticed that his parent house was up for sale. We had a small wedding ceremony, given the complicated family issues, and only invited close family and relatives. Even so, it was a special day, and I was happy with how it turned out. Now, 
We have been blessed with a beautiful daughter, and I've quit my job to focus on raising her. My parents visit occasionally to help take care of her, which is a big help. James and I are committed to supporting each other and raising our daughter with love.